نحمد ہوا نسلی علیہ رسول الکریم اما بعد فاعوز باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب شرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری و احل لقبتم من لسانی یفقہ قولی Dear brothers and sisters and sons and daughters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. According to the numbering of Imam Nawawi, we shall inshallah be studying five ahadis today. But in fact they are six because hadith number 27 is composed actually of two ahadis. Now the subject matter of the first three ahadis or the first two if we take the numbering of Imam Nawawi relates to a very important philosophical discussion. You know there are branches of philosophy. Ethics is one of the branches of philosophy. Psychology is another branch of philosophy although now these disciplines have become independent in themselves. But previously they used to be taught together as branches of philosophy. Now in ethics there is a very basic discussion. Are there some permanent ethical values or these values go on changing? Because we know that according to Marxism there are no permanent ethical values, no values of good and bad, good or evil, immutable, no. Actually these values are the product of the economic conditions of the time. But what has Quran to say about it? What is the teaching of Islam about it? Islam says no. Fundamental ethical values, moral values are permanent and they are ingrained in human nature. Man knows by his very nature what is good, what is bad, what is right, what is wrong, what is good, what is evil. Man knows it because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he has given the faculties, for example, these external senses, organs of external senses that we have got. We can see, we can hear and so on. Allah has given to human beings, mankind, some inner senses also. Somehow we refer to these things as intuition, for example. Conscience, for example. Why these words have been used? Why these words have been coined? My conscience is pricking me. There is something within me. It's blaming me. You have done something wrong. So Quran says that as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has made man Sami'am Basira, We have created human beings out of mixed sperm and the ovum, the, go the zygote. And what form he have created? For testing. خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لَيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا He has created this life and death. What for? To put you a test. Who amongst you do good deeds? As Iqbal says, قُلْ زُمِ حَسْتِي سَي تُو اُبْرَاهِ مَانِنْدِ حَبَاب اس زیان خانے میں تیرا امتحان ہے زندگی. Now if someone is to be put to a test, he must be taught something. He must be given something first and then you can test him. What has Allah given us? The first answer we get in this ayah 
ان اخلق الانسان من نطفه نمشاج نبتليه فجعلناه سبيعا بصيرا وی ہیو گیون دم دس دیز فیکلٹیز آف سینگ اینڈ ہیئرنگ اینڈ اوور ابو دیٹ وی فائنڈ ان دی سورا ویری فیمس سورا سورت الشمس والشمس وضحاها والقمر اذا طلاها والنهار اذا جلاها والليل اذا يغشاها والسماء وما بناها والارض وما طحاها ونفس وما سواها فالهمها فجورها وتقواها a very important place of quran regarding one thing the fact or the statement on which allah is swearing is very small wa nafsin wa ma sawaha fa alhamaha fujuraha wa taqwaha qad aflaha man zakkaha wa qad khaba man dassaha but the oaths how many of them wa shams wa duhaha wa al qamar iza talaha wa al nahar iza jallaha wa al layl iza yaghsha wa al samaa wa ma banaha wa al ard wa ma tahaha وَنَفْسٍ وَمَا سَوَّاهَا فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا All these physical creatures and the physical phenomena of nature, they testify to this, that we have made this nafs, human nafs, in a very beautiful way. سَوَّاهَا Finished it. Gave it very good finishing. فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا And we inspired into it, gave it the knowledge of good and bad. So human nature is not blind, just as we have our eyes to see. We have something within us, the insight. It's the eyes of the heart, the soul, the spirit. And just as our eyes can tell whether this is white or black, in the same way, the inner eye can tell you this is good, this is bad. This is the basic philosophy of Quran. That is why the very fundamental terminology of Quran is Maruf and Munkar. What is Maruf? Which is very well known, recognized. Munkar, which appears to be strange, not recognizable, not good or bad. Khair and Shar are other words, but Mahuf and Munkar. Ya Muna Ya Qimis Salah, wa Amur Bil Maruf, wa Nhani Al Munkar, wa Sbir Ala Ma Aswabak. In Nazalik Amin Aswabil Umur. Human nature knows it, recognizes it, that this is good. And human nature abhors whatever is wrong, whatever is evil. Doesn't recognize it. Is not comfortable with it. Either you might be committing something wrong due to some reasons, under some influences, whether esoteric or exoteric. But even when you are committing something evil, something bad, something within you is saying you are doing wrong. And that is the conscience. And in the terminology of Quran, it is called nafs al-lawama. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sworn by this. لا أقسم بيوم القيامة ولا أقسم بالنفس اللوامة. This conscience, this zabir, within you, I swear by it. What a big reality. So this is actually a very basic philosophical issue of Quran. Man need not be told that this is good, this is bad. He knows it. This insight has already been given to him. And these ethical values are permanent. They don't change. They don't change. 
with the changing of economic conditions? No. If some philosophy says that, it's false, it's wrong. Now, this basic subject has been described by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in three ways. First of all, now we take hadith number 11. الحديث الحادي عشر عن أبي محمد الحسن بن علي بن أبي طالب سبت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وريحانته رضي الله عنهما قال We have seen that it is the usual habit of Imam Nawawi when he gives a hadith from a sahabi for the first time then he gives the full name his name, who was his father, what was his kunniya, and so on. But if another hadith is repeated, another hadith from the same Ravi is included, then simple name. Because here it is for the first time that we are having a hadith from Hazrat Hassan ibn Ali ibn Abi Talib, radiyallahu anhuma. His kunniya is Abu Muhammad. His name is Al-Hasan, son of Ali, radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma. And Ali was son of Abi, Abu Talib. Sibti Rasulullah, the grandson of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Warayhanatihi. And his fragrant flower, radiyallahu anhuma. قال he says حفظت من رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم I learned and memorized from my grandfather my maternal grandfather محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم the messenger of Allah these words this gem of wisdom دع ما يريبك إلى ما لا يريبك you need walk. Leave, give up everything which produces some dissatisfaction within you. Because here is the barometer. Here is the thermometer. It will tell you. So whatever is producing some khaljan, I don't know what word in English I can use. Not anxiety. Khaljan is something else. Discomfort. Discomfort, yes. Anything. There's something within you which doesn't like it. Some conflict there. So whatever produces this condition within you, leave it. Because the verdict of your heart and soul is not wrong. Whatever gives you this type of discomfort and discontentment, dissatisfaction, leave it. It must be haram. You have a litmus paper within you. And take to that thing with which you feel comfortable. Your heart, your soul is satisfied. رواه الترمذي والنسائي وقال الترمذي حديث حسن صحيح امام الترمذي اور امام النسائي دے ہیو بوت ایکسپٹڈ دس حدیث انکلوڈڈ اٹ ان देयर کلیکشنز ناؤ کم ٹو نمبر 27 عن النواس بن سمعان رضی اللہ عنہ عن النبی صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم قال the Ravi here is Nawaz ibn Sam'an radiyallahu an. He relates it from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That he said, Al-birru husnul khuluq. Now this bir, you know, again, I'm at a loss to get some one word which can give the full connotation of bir. In our selected course of study of the Quran, the second lesson is on this subject. 
لئی سل بر تولو وجو حکم قبل المشر قبل مغرب ولاکن البر من آمن بلّہ ول یوم لاخر ول ملاکت ول کتاب ول نبیین الا آخر الایا A very profound ayat of the Quran, 177. Whole of Quranic ethics is there in one ayah. Anyhow, I'm not going to discuss that. Al-Birr, what is piety? What is virtue? What is righteousness? How do you define it? Birr, piety. Virtue, righteousness, albirru husnul khulq, good behavior, kind to your fellow beings, trying to do good to whomsoever you can. Husnul khulq, good habits, lovable personality by others. Now here is a vote of confidence, so to say, in the collective nature of humanity. As you know, in psychology, the subconscious mind of if each individual human being is something else. But then according to Jung, there is a collective subconscious mind of the community also. In the same way, there is individual conscience and a collective conscience also. Just as this individual conscience of yours and mine gives correct verdict, the collective conscience of mankind as a whole also gives correct verdict. If people say he is a good man, he is a good man. And if people say He's not a good man. He's not a good man. Again, a litmus test. And based on what? <clears throat> That the basic moral values are ingrained in human nature. Their verdict that this is a good person and this is a bad person. It's never wrong. Kehti hai tujko khalq khuda gaay bana kya? What people say about you? This is a mirror in which you can see yourself. Al birru husnul khuluq, wal ismu ma haqa fi nafsik. And what is sin? Ism. Again, a very beautiful definition based on the same philosophy. The sin is that which creates dissatisfaction. In your soul, the same thing. Dama yuribo ka ilama la yuribo ka. You have a barometer within you. It will tell you this is wrong. You might be rationalizing it. You might have certain justifications just to pacify your conscience. You might be eloquent enough. To quieten the people, no, I didn't do this for this purpose. No, my purpose was this. I was doing this. But at the same time, when your opponent has kept quiet, you have quietened him. Something within you says you are going saying it wrong thing. You are wrong. You are telling a lie. What is that? The soul. Or the spirit in you. Actually, all these things are based on that basic concept that man has a dual existence: his animal being, a full, independent existence in itself, and his spiritual being, a full and independent existence in itself. The two are joined together. There is within you the spirit of Allah. The spirit was not made of clay. Now I remember that very good English poetry. 
Thus thou art to dust we transmissed, was blood spoken of the soul. These are the sayings of the Bible. Thus thou art to dust we transmissed. Minha khalaqnaakum wa fiha nu'idukum. From this clay we have created you. And we'll let you go again into the same. But is this the whole existence of man? No. Dust thou art, to dust this earnest, was not spoken of the soul. Soul is something else. Better word is spirit. It has come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly. As you know, in two places in the Quran we find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the angels, when I have completed the creation of this human being and finished it, having given him all the finishing touches, فَإِذَا سَوَّيْتُهُ وَنَفَقْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِي And then I blow into him from my own spirit. فَقَعُوا لَهُ سَاجِدِي Then you bow before him. Fall prostrating before him. But when? When that spirit of mine has been blown into it. Not the animal being of human beings. But because the spirit of Allah was blown into him. So that is actually the source of our nature. That is why there is another hadith. كُلُّ مَوْلُودٍ يُلَدُوا عَلَى الْفِتْرَةِ فَأَبَوَاهُ يُحَوَّدَانِهِ أَوْ يُمَجْلِسَانِهِ أَوْ يُنَسْلَانِهِ Every human being, the child is born as a Muslim. His nascent nature is on Islam. فِتْرَةَ اللَّهِ الَّتِي فَتَرَ النَّاسَ عَلَيْهَا This nature of human beings is the nature of Allah. فِتْرَةَ اللَّهِ يَسَلُونَ كَانِ الرُّوحُ قُلِ الرُّوحُ مِنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّي أَمْرُ اللَّهُ فِتْرَةُ اللَّهُ And some of the western thinkers and writers also use this term. Although they might not be knowing what they are talking about. Divine spark. There is some divine spark in human beings. There are certain attitudes of the human beings which cannot be explained on the basis of animal instincts. So that is the basic philosophy. Al birru husnul khuruq wal isma ma haqa fi nafsik whatever produces khaljan within you you feel this comfortable not uncomfortable it is guna it is ism it is sin and now again wa karehta an yattali' alayhi nas and you dislike that people should come to know of it. This is again a vote of confidence in the collective nature of humanity. Certain acts that you have performed, even if you are sincere enough, you are not going to tell people that I have done this good thing. Okay. That is something very bad. To show off your piety or virtue. But somehow or the other, if people come to know and it is mentioned, you have a good feeling. It proves this thing is good. Again, the litmus test. Your own conscience is also testifying, and the collective conscience of the mankind is also testifying. So it is double proved. It is good. And if you have done something, and you don't want that people should know it. This is the test that this is evil. You are karehta. In another relation of the Sadis, karehta and yut pala alay, passive voice. Here it is active voice. Wa karehta and yat tali alayhi nas. And you don't like that people should come to know about it that I have done this. Again, I'm using the same word. Vote of confidence in human nature. Human nature is not blind. Now another hadith, and that is why I said under this 27th number, there are two ahadiths. 
This hadith is included in the Sahih of Imam Muslim. Al birru husnul khulq wal ismu mahaka fi sadrik nafsik wa karehta an yuttala alayh ya karehta an yattari alayhu al-nas. Rawahu Muslim. وعن وابس ابن معبد رضي الله عنه عن هذا الحديث to the same effect قال he says and some words you know have been left here he says that the prophet said once he went to see the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and the prophet said جئت أتصل عن البر I guess oh وابس You have come to ask me about Bir. What is Bir? He had not uttered his question, but the Prophet said, "I know it, that you have come with this purpose." Jeta tas alo anil Bir. You have come to me to ask me about Bir. What is Bir? What is piety? What is virtue? What is righteousness? قول تو نام آئی سیڈ یس او مسجد رف اللہ یو آر کریکٹ آئی ہیو کم ٹو یو ٹو آسک اینڈ انکوائر فرام یو وٹ از بیر کال ناؤ دس از دی ٹیکسٹ آف دی حدیث دی سینگ آف دی پروفٹ اس تفت قلبک آلویز آسک یور اون ہارٹ وچ ول ٹیل یو I have given you the gist, you know, in the very beginning. The basic question. Whether human nature is blind and the basic moral values, ethical values are just the product of the environment, especially the economic conditions prevailing at a time? No. The basic moral values are permanent, immutable. They are ingrained in human nature. The nafsim wa ma sallaha fa alhamaha fujuraha wa taqwa ilham. What the difference between ilham and wahi? Wahi is verbal. Ilham is something which we call inspiration. <coughs> the words they are coined by the person himself. Somehow you feel something has come to your mind. Something has come to your heart. This is ilham. Fal hamaha fujuraha wa taqwa. Allah subhanahu wa taala has given this human soul the knowledge, the differentiation, the recognition of what is fujur, what is taqwa, what is good, what is bad, what is evil, what is good. Jeta tasal wa albir kul to nam kala astafte kalbak. البر مطمئنت الہ نفس و مطمئن الہ القلب پائٹی ان ورچو اینڈ رائٹسنس از دیٹ آن وچ دی سول گیٹس سیٹسفیکشن اینڈ آن وچ یور ہارٹ گیٹس سیٹسفیکشن دیٹ از وائی دی ہائیسٹ اسپرچل لیول In Quran, because you know different terminology is used, but in one terminology, the highest position, spiritual position, is an nafsul mutmain. Ya yatuhan nafsul mutmain na turjiyi la Rabbi kiraadu yatam barbiya. Fadkhuli fi ibadi, fadkhuli jann. البر مطمئنة إليه النفس وطمئنة إليه القلب والاسم ما حاك في النفس and sin is which creates some khadbad some irritation some sort of conflict dissatisfaction a, a sense of uncomfortableness وطردد في الصدر And there is, you know, taraddud. You know, going to and fro. Mutmain, something is mutmain. Calm and quiet. 
I remember a quotation, it used to be on the Alpha notebooks when I was just a student of reading in my FSC pre-medical about the pyramids of Egypt. Very beautiful quotation. Calm and self-possessed. Pyramids echo unto eternity. The defined cry of man's will to survive and conquer the storms of time. Why did these kings build these pyramids? They represent the urge in man. I want to live forever. Lest I should be forgotten. Lest my memory should be erased from the minds of people. To survive and conquer the storms of time. Calm and self-possessed. Pyramids echo unto eternity. The defined cry of man to survive and conquer the storms of time. So this is actually the storm within you. Taraddada fi sadr. Wal isma bahaka fi nafs wa taraddada fi sadr wa in naftaka nasu wa aftawk. Although the people might be giving you fatwa, this is, this is correct, this is, this is okay, this is halal, this is permissible. They might be giving you the fatwa. The verdict is there. But your soul is not accepting it. Trust your soul, not the mufti. And I recall an incident, a worth mentioning and worth remembering incident of our history. The crown prince of Nuruddin Zangi, rahimahullah, he was fatally ill. The physicians suggested he should take some wine. Maybe the condition becomes better. So it was suggested, take some wine. He said, it is haram, forbidden. How can I take it? No, no, we have got the fatwa that this is to save life. Something which is haram can be taken. He said, but it can be a fatwa of some one fiqh. What about the others? Till that all, all the four you know, schools of fiqh of Ali Sunnah had been formulated already. Say so the fatwa was taken from all the four muftis. Then he called them. Ask them, if Allah wants to give me health, does he need that I should take this wine and only then he will be able to give me health? No, 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 no. And if the time of my death has come, can't this wine defer it? No, 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 no. So he said, take your fatwa and run away. I'm not going to take it. And he died. Even among the kings, don't think all were bad people. Very good examples we have. Very good examples. Nasiruddin Mahmood of India. Aurangzeb. Salauddin Ayyubi. Guruddin Sangi. Anyhow, why naftaq al-mufti? Why naftaq al-nas waftauk? So the fatwa can be wrong, your own nature, your heart cannot be wrong. These are the three ahadis regarding this important subject about what we may call the ethics of Quran and the ethics of Islam. Now we are coming to three ahadis which relate to the legal and the judicial system of Islam. Come to number 14 first. An ibn Mas'udin radiyallahu anhu qala qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
لا يحل دم امرئ مسلم الا باحدى صلاه الصيب الزاني والنفس بالنفس والطارق لدينه المفارق للجماعه رواه البخاري ومسلم رحمه الله the capital punishment in islam life of a person can be taken of a muslim only in one of the three conditions la yahillu dam umri muslimin the blood of any muslim person is not halal to spill this blood will not be okay permissible except in one of the three cases as-sayyibuzani a person a male or a female already married and even then committing adultery this is what we call rajum stoning to death the fiercest form of death putting to death anybody you can kill a person by a electric current also you know just and gone even hanging is a very painless affair but they're stoning to death that is why ben azir says wahshiyana these are wahshiyana punishments But this is the philosophy of Islam. Punish one and teach a lesson to one thousand. Exemplary punishment, deterrent. Yes. Asayyibu zani, man nafsu bin nafs, and life for life. If you have committed a murder, kill the human being. Well. except if the inheritors of the person who was killed or murdered they forgive okay they can spare your life or if they accept blood money okay but if not you will be put to death and the third wa tariq ul dinihi al mufariq ul jamaa whom we call murtad Whosoever Muslims Muslim gives up Islam and becomes a non-Muslim, he is murtad. He has left the main body of the Muslim Ummah, the Al Mufarrik ul Jamaa, the Jamaa, the Muslim community. Now about these things, there are doubts today in the minds of some Muslim scholars even. because it is the influence of the global civilization the materialistic thought the ideas that emerge from west they are prevalent they have engulfed the whole globe they have creeped into our thinking also so many of the muslim scholars also say there is no rajum and i'm very sorry to say that even a person from whom i benefited a lot regarding the study of quran i'm very sorry to say that he also gave the verdict that the punishment for every adulterer male or female married or non married is the same Hundred stripes. I mean, more than I mean, that's an islahi. I severed my relations with him on this. This is the consensus of the whole ummah. The ahli tashayyo, the ahli tasannun, the Hanafis, the Balikis, the Shafi'is, the Hanbalis, the Zaidis, the Zahiris. all except khawarij about whom the whole ummah 
was agreed that they are outside the pale of Islam. Except for them, there's no difference in this. That the punishment for a non-married, unmarried person for adultery is hundred stripes. But for a married male or female, it is stoning to death. In the same way today, because you know this is the era of freedom, freedom of choice, freedom of thought. Oh, you are going to kill a person, a Muslim, if he becomes murtad. And we say, yeah, no, 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 this is some misunderstanding. <laughs> Islam can't be so irrational. This is here you find, Muttafaqun Ali. And I have told you that a hadith about whose authenticity both Imam Muslim and Imam Bukhari agree is very near to Quran regarding the authenticity. And that is why the consensus of the Ummah for 1400 long years, consensus. And it can be argued. Because people don't know what an ideological state is. Islam is an ideological state. It can be disrupted. People can accept Islam, then get, went out. Then accept Islam and then leave. To weaken the foundations of that society. And if we have it in Quran. Some of the Jews, you will find it in Surah Al Imran. They conspired. They prepared a conspiracy. وَقَالَ الطَّائِفَةٌ مِّنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ آمِنُوا بِالَّذِي أُنزِلَ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَجْهَ النَّهَارِ وَكْفَرُوا آخِرَهُ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْجِعُونَ Let us, we shall tomorrow morning, we shall declare we accept Islam. Jews, they prepared this conspiracy. Then we shall pass the whole day with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the evening we shall say, oh, we have given up. We thought there is something. There is nothing. We have seen it from very close quarter. It's all glittering from a distance. Nothing really there. To break the goodwill that Islam had. It's whosoever accepts Islam. Even if you cut it, him into pieces, he is not going back. To shatter this goodwill of Islam. So this has to be. The way and path of this conspiracy has to be obstructed. This is an Islamic state. All these punishments are to be. Enforced in Islamic state. Not before the state is established. But this is one of the very fundamental issues, legal questions, criminal law. Capital punishment to Muslim can be in only these three ways. There are more ahadis which say there is only one other condition of killing a human being. This is about the Muslims only. What about the non-Muslims? A non-Muslim belonging to a nation against whom war has been declared. Kafir Harabi. Not every Kafir. Not every non-Muslim. No. Against whom there is declaration of war. You can kill him. This is the only fourth condition in which the life of a human being can be taken. Now, hadith number 32, please. Again, a very brief hadith, very small one. When Abi Sa'id, Sa'ad ibn Malik ibn Sanan al-Khudri, radiyallahu an. Generally, the name is an Abi Sa'id al-Khudri, radiyallahu an. We have already read one hadith from him, but this is later on in this, according to this, it is the 34th hadith. And they are only An Abi Sayyidan al-Khudri, the brief name. 
but here because in this collection this is the first hadith from this comparison of the prophet so full name an abi saidin sa'd ibn malik ibn sinan al khudri radiyallahu an an rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam qala la dharara wa la dirara hadith hasan rawahu ibn maja wa dar qutni wa ghayruhuma musnad wa rawahu malik fi al muatta mursalan عن عمرو بن يحيى عن ابي عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم so here again imam nawawi has added another hadith the text is the same but the lineage is different when the same text is narrated by different sahaba and different tabi'in it becomes more ahadith number is changed la darara wa la ghurar dirara there should be no harming anybody and no reciprocation of harming what does it mean first of all we may say it's a moral sermon good advice you shouldn't harm anybody yes but the other part is legal wala zirar what is the difference between zirar and zirar the same between jihad and jihad between qatl and qital what is qatl a one sided phenomenon somebody was going and somebody shot him he was killed and what is qital when two groups come face to face trying to kill each other we say two way phenomenon double sided phenomenon now it is qital fighting war whatever you may call it so qatl is unilateral phenomenon qital is bilateral juhud to strive for something jihad when there is competition you want to do something and there is some obstruction So this is jihad against struggle against something is jihad and strive for something is juhud in the same way zarar and zirar now at the moral level you are entitled to get the revenge but not yourself in an organized society if somebody has done some harm to you you are not allowed to harm him you have to invoke the process of law go and lodge a complaint invoke the judicial process not yourself because he hurt me i hurt him oh no if this is allowed it will go on there will be chaos So the first part, la darara. It can be said to be a good moral teaching. Don't try to harm anybody. I quoted the hadith, another hadith. Al Muslimu man salim al Muslimu na min lisanehi wa yadi. A true Muslim is the one from whose hands and tongue all the Muslims are safe. No harm is coming to the Muslims by his tongue or hands. This is one of the definitions. Al Muslimo, man salim al Muslimu na min lisan hi wa yadi. This is the definition of the Muslims. Just imagine, if we are real Muslims, how peaceful this society would become. This is salam, peace. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon you. Qilan salaman salama. There's another hadith. Lan tadkhulu al-jannah hatta tu'minu. O Muslims, you will not be able to enter Jannah unless you have real iman. Walan tu'minu hatta tahabu. And mind you, you will not be able to get real iman unless you love each other.
Always you'll be finding these words, salaman, salam. So la zarara wa la zirara. You are entitled to take revenge, but not yourself. That would be to revert to the original state when there was no society, no system. The beginning, we may say, according to the modern philosophy, theories of philosophy, Man was uncivilized in the beginning. They don't revert to that. Now there's a system. If somebody has done any harm to you, you invoke that system. Not yourself. La varara wa la zirara. Yes. Now 33. Ali ibn Abbas in Razi Allahu anhuma anna Rasul Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal This is from Abdullah ibn Abbas Razi Allahu ta'ala anhuma And he is relating it from the Messenger of Allah that he said La yurta al-nasu bidawahum لدع رجال أموال قوم ودماهم لكن البينة على المدعي واليمين على من أنكر حديث حسن رواه البهقي وغيرهما وبعضه في الصحيحين some portions of this hadith are found to be present included in صحيحين also in the صحيح of Imam Bukhari and Sahih of Imam Muslim, but the full text which is given here, it is from Bayhaqi, Rahimahullah. Lo yotan nasu bidawahum. If people were to be given whatever they claimed, I claim this house is mine. I swear by God, this is mine, not his. Because he is swearing, he is a very Bias person, so we accept his claim. This lord, the person who is living there, you vacate the house. This house is for this mudari. No. If this this would have been the habit, ladari jarun amwalo kumi wajma un their people will start claiming the lives and the wealth of everybody. No claim can be entertained without a proof. Lakin al bayyana to al mudari, the claimant, he has to produce proof. But for the person who is denying it, well, I am living in this house. Or for example, I have this pen in my pocket. Somebody says it's mine, not yours. I swear by God, this is mine. Go you with your swear and your oath, nothing doing. But if I can't swear, this is mine. His claim might be entertained. For me, only swearing would be sufficient. I swear by Allah, it is mine. His claim goes. Very fundamental teaching. Al bayyana tu al mudda'i. Whosoever is claiming something, he has to furnish the proof. 
ہی ہیز ٹو پروڈیوس دی وٹنسز جسٹ ایز ہیپن ان دی کیس اف حضرت علی رضی اللہ عنہ ون اف ہز یو نو آربر وٹ ریفریش ٹو کال اٹ زیرا اٹ واز اسٹولن دیٹ اٹ واز ریکورڈ فرام دی پوزیشن اف اے جیو حضرت علی کلیم اٹ از مائن There was the case, although he was Amirul Mu'mineen at that time, but even Amirul Mu'mineen, he is not above law. The case went to the court of Qadi Shurah. From the time of Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala, who judiciary had been instituted independently. Now he appeared before Qadi Shurah with the claim that this Armor. What is Zira? Is it, is it correct? Armor. This is mine. Yeah? No, no, no. Zira. To save yourself from attacks of the swords, etc., you wear something which is armor. Yes. This armor is mine. He said, produce witnesses to Muslim, dependable, Muslims of good character. As witness, he said, yes, here is Hassan, my son, here is my slave, another one, this is mine. They recognize this is mine. He said, Ya Abu al-Hassan, and Ali, radiallahu an, objected. Why did you call me Abu al-Hassan? Because when, you know, an Arab calls another person, with his kunniya, it is honoring him. You should not have honored me at this point. I am one of the parties to this case, equal to the other person. You should have said, Ya Ali, this is the first mistake that you have committed, Ya Shurek. But what was the complete sentence of Shurah. Ya Abul Hassan, son and slave cannot be accepted as witnesses. Do you have any other witnesses? No. The case dismissed. And the Jew accepted Islam. This is the justice. This is the judicial system of Islam. The Caliph himself, Amirul Mu'mineen, about whom no Muslim could ever have doubted that he is telling a lie. But law is law. Law requires you are a claimant. You have to prove it. You have to produce witnesses. So this hadith, لَا يُعْتَ النَّاسُ بِدَعْوَاهُمْ لَدَّا رِجَالُ الْأَمْوَالَ قَوْمٍ وَدِمَاهُمْ Everybody would have claimed, no, this is mine, this is mine. The chaos would be there. So a rule has to be followed. لَكِنِ الْبَيِّنَةُ عَلَى الْمُدَّعِي Whosoever is there as a claimant, it is the onus of proof is on him. As for the مُدَّعَ عَلَيْهِ this respondent from him, even an oath would also suffice. Not against proof, but if there is no proof, his oath will be sufficient because there is the possession. And possession is half of the proof. This house is in my possession, this pen is in my possession. Now you have to prove that this, is, this belongs to you. I don't have to prove that it belongs to me. Only if I can swear, that will be sufficient to put off your claim. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika nashadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaykum.